Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 17th of July. And a very, very small number of updates this week, so we'll get through them super quickly. As always though, I do have the chapters in the description, the bottom of the video, so you can jump to a specific update. New videos this week, I created a Logic Apps for Everyone. I really walk through from a blank canvas, creating a fairly useful um, little flow to shut down all of the virtual machines in a certain subscription. But I use different types of ways to call actions, integrating with different types of services, sending an email, different logic, to really help you fully understand some of the key capabilities that are available. And then I did a dive into the ADLS Gen 2, the Generation 2 data lake available in Azure, what it is, how I get it, and why I might choose to use it. Onto the new features, so on the compute side, there's now Azure AD integration for managed disk import and export. If we think about, hey, I'm using a managed disk to contain maybe data uh, or configuration for my virtual machine, well, that's protected when it's running up in Azure by whatever network controls and authentication I have to talk to the running VM. But if someone just maybe downloaded um, the disk, well, who knows what they then might try and do with it. So what I can now do is I can turn on Azure AD integration to secure the downloading or uploading of a VHD related to a managed disk. So now to be able to do that import or export, I'll actually need the data operator for managed disks on that disk or some other resource group or subscription level to be able to perform those export import operations. I could create a custom role, I just need to have the permissions that are part of that data operator for managed disks new role. I do have to go and enable this feature today, obviously it is in preview. At a larger scale, once it goes GA, maybe I'd use something like Azure Policy to enable this at a subscription or management group level. On the networking side, the gateway load balancer has gone GA. So many times I'm gonna have some service I have running and I wanna add some network virtual appliance as part of the data flow. Maybe I wanna have a firewall or monitoring or traffic analytics or some low level DDoS protection, traffic mirroring. And it's actually pretty painful to put something in the data path. I have to maybe use user defined routes. Then I have to worry about, well, multiple instances of whatever this NVA is. And then, well, how does the routing work? How do I keep it symmetric? So it's a pretty painful thing. What the gateway load balancer lets me do is I create this gateway load balancer with my network virtual appliances behind it, and then I just chain it to the actual target load balancer where the traffic goes. It becomes a true bump in the wire. It's truly invisible. And we can see this super quickly, and I have a whole video diving into the detail on it, but you can just now go and create a gateway load balancer. So I have one of these, and my video goes into all the detail, but you can see here, hey, the SKU is gateway. And then that uses, for example, VXLAN behind the scenes to make it truly invisible to the end load balancer that finally relieves the traffic. But on that target load balancer, all I have to do is in that front end configuration, I simply add in now, hey, I want you to use this gateway load balancer and you select the load balancer you've created. So it is a true bump in the wire. I'm not having to do modifications to IP routes, it's completely transparent. To my target service, hey, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to use UDRs. I don't have to worry about all those things. I don't have to have a network connection to the network where that gateway load balancer sits. It could be in a different subscription. It could be in a different tenant. Uh, there's no VNet connectivity required. It just becomes that real true bump in the wires. This is a fantastic feature and now it's GA. So I'm using network virtual appliances. This is how I want to integrate them with my regular services. This, this is gonna really simplify everything and it's super, super powerful. And again, I've got that detailed video um, if you're interested. Miscellaneous, so Windows Auto Patch has gone GA. We're used to the idea of Patch Tuesday. All the patches come out. And yes, inside Windows operating system, we can configure, hey, automatically download them and apply them. 
But for an organization that's not typically an attractive thing, what if there was some patch that causes a problem with some application or process we have? Instead, we like to have these rings of deployment. We think about, hey, we have some test machines. Then we have some early previews from all the business units who are maybe hero users, who we trust to go and test the functionality. Then maybe a, a bigger subset of the organization and then these broad deployments. So I need a management tool to be able to do that. We might use things like Configuration Manager. Well now Windows Auto Patch is gonna do that as a complete service. It thinks about those rings, a test ring, a first ring, maybe about 1% of the organization, a fast ring, about 9% of the organization, and then a broad ring, the other 90%. So this is gonna be used for those quality updates of Windows, but it's also gonna support feature updates, antivirus definitions, Microsoft 365 applications, Teams, and Microsoft Edge. So now we can get that nice controlled rollout and get the visibility into it using that Windows Auto Patch. Now it's part of Windows 10, Windows 11 Enterprise E3 or higher. There's various Azure AD and Intune requirements. So the documentation goes through all of that but this will now remove me having to manage any infrastructure, but get that nice controlled rollout of the updates. Um, Azure Site Recovery has an update rollout 62. These are really, I think some quality of life, some additional operating systems are now supported as part of it, sort of the Azure to Azure, VMware physical to Azure, um, some various issues fixed. So the documentation does go through all of those. And then finally, just be aware, for a while now, a V2 version of Azure AD Connect has been out. The on-premises engine to synchronize from our Active Directory domain services to Azure AD. And the V2 made a, a number of changes about the endpoints it used, the engine, the SQL, OS supported. Well, that auto upgrade to V2 is gonna start happening soon. Up to this point, it's saying we have chosen, we can go and deploy the V2. Now it's gonna automatically start rolling out. It does require Windows Server 2016 or above to run that Azure AD Connect engine, but just be aware um, that is coming. And that was it. I told you it was a short week, so I hope that was useful. As always, have a phenomenal week, and I'll see you on the next video.